everyone and welcome to On The Spot STEM. Today we will be doing states. States is a very powerful technique and it's used to solve a variety of combinatorics problems that appear on AMC, AMI and other contests. So what is a state? Well, the name kind of reveals it. It's just a description of an intermediate event that we're looking for. So states show up in a lot of situations. For example, if you're trying to model a two or three player game and you want to find the probability that something happens or one person wins, then we can use states to set up equations to represent the probability of each person winning. Similarly, if you have a particle or multiple particles moving in a plane randomly on a random walk, then we can, sim we can use states and expected value to simulate the probability that the particle reaches something or the expected value of time before it reaches that thing. So the best way to teach it is obviously through problems. So we're going to go to our first problem. So this problem is problem number 22 from the 2017 AMC 12A. The problem reads, a square is drawn in the Cartesian coordinate plane with vertices 2, 2, negative 2, 2, negative 2, negative 2, and 2, negative 2. And we have a particle that starts at the origin, or 0, 0. And every second it moves with equal probability to one of the eight lattice points closest to its current position. And here I have indicated the lattice points in blue. So. In other words, the probability is one eighth that the particle will move from x y, so it's gonna move right down, left up, or right, uh, right, and up, or right down, left down, and left up, with probability one eighth. And eventually, the particle will hit the square for the first time, either at one of the four corners, or on one of the red dots, which are the lattice points on the sides of the square. So the probability that it, it will hit a corner rather than at an interior point of a side is m over n, and we just want to compute the probability and sum the numerator and denominator. So how do we go about doing this? Well, basically, the particle has many different kind of stages or positions it could be in while on this walk. So we just want to set up equations to model each of these and then solve for, uh, solve for the equation that relates to the origin. So since the origin is in the center, we can just, let's just call it point x. And let's let p of x be the probability that the particle would hit a corner instead of a side for the first time. So then we have p of x is equal to. And in state and expected value problems, the main crux of the problem is to find, find uh, is to take one of the states and relate it to other states that the particle can be in. So if we want to relate it to other points, the particle moves up, right, down, or left with probability one half, and observe that these are all basically symmetric to each other. The probability of reaching a corner from this point is the same as if you go right, if you go left, or if you go down. So let's just call this point y. So it's equal to one half times p of y. And then if you move diagonal, it's the same story. These points are all symmetric about each other. So it's just one half plus one half times p of x, or p of z. So since we have one equation, but we have three variables, we'll have to make at least two more equations to relate our things together. So now let's look at what happens when the particle is at point y. So p of y is equal to, it moves, it moves to y again with probability 1 fourth, because it can move diagonally. It moves back to x with probability 1 8th. And it moves up or down with probability 1 4th. So that's p of z. And if you move right, right up or right down, then your walk is going to end because you, don't, you want to hit a corner, but you just hit a side and you're done. So that happens with probability 3 eighths, but it also results in a probability 0 of hitting a corner. So we just ignore that. Now, if you go to point z, we see that p of z is equal to, you can move to y with 1 fourth probability. You can move back to x with probability 1 eighth. And you can move right or up but you're going to hit a red point and then your walk will end. However, you can move diagonally up with probability 1 8th, in which case you hit a corner. So if you hit a corner, then we're done. 
So that would be with probability 1 8. So now that we have three equations, we just need to solve for p of x. So let's just multiply the, each of the equations by a number so that we can deal with whole number coefficients and not fractions. So if you multiply the first, since the GCD of all these fractions is equal to uh, 1 8, we can just multiply all the equations by 8. So our new equations would be 8 p of x is equal to 4 p of y plus 4 p of z. And then 8 p of y is equal to is equal to 2 p of y. And we can just, since p of y is on the other side, we can just, we can just isolate it. So 8 minus 2 is 6, plus 8 times 1 over 8 times p of x, which is just p of x, plus 2 p of z. And p of z is equal to 8 p of z is equal to 2 p of y plus p of x plus 1. So we want to solve for p of x. So let's just try to, uh, we can just create systems of two equations by subtracting these appropriately. So if you subtract the second equation twice from the first equation, then we see that p of z cancels out. Let's just subtract this twice. Then the 4 and the 4 would cancel out. We see that 8p of x minus 12p of y is equal to 4p of y minus 2p of x. And if you combine like terms, you'll get 10p of x is equal to 16p of y. So this is our first equation, which is two variables. Now let's look at the let's just look at the second and third equations. Equations. Well, we want to subtract the third equation times something so that we can take out the constant of p of z. Well, if you multiply the second equation by four and add it to the first and add it to the third equation, then you'll get 24p of y plus 8p of z, but we have 8p of z on the other side, so the p of z's get canceled out. It's equal to 2p of y plus 5p of x plus 1. And thus, 22p of y is equal to 5p of x plus 1. Now that we have two equations and two variables, we can just substitute for p of y. If you divide both sides by 16, you get p of y is equal to 5 eighths p of x by the first equation. And if you substitute this in, then we see 108 p of x divided by 8. 110 p of x divided by 8 is equal to 5 p of x plus 1. This is equal to 55 over 4. And if you subtract 5 p of x from both sides, then you'll get that 35 p of x over 4 is equal to 1. Solving for p of x, we see p of x is equal to 4 over 35. Now we go back to the problem. The problem asks for the problem says that the probability is m over n, so we want to find m, m plus n. And since p of x is equal to four over thirty-five, and four is relatively prime to thirty-five, the answer is just four plus thirty-five or thirty-nine, and we're done.